Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good evening, this is Dr. Pradhan here. Welcome to NPTEL project on econometric modeling. So, today we will continue the same uh, time series modeling. So, in the last lectures, we briefly highlighted about the uh, time series setup, uh, your, its problem related to time series, how it can be designed with respect to various models like you know. Uh, uh, univariate time series models, multivariate time series models, then uh, uh, under multivariate time series models we have discussed autoregressive, uh, autoregressive, uh, autoregressive distributive lag model and autoregressive lag models. So, in the case of uh, univariate time series modeling, so we have discussed various issues like uh, autoregressive schemes, moving average schemes and uh, ARMA schemes, uh, autoregressive moving average schemes and uh, there is a structure, I mean just introduce the concept of ARIMA, uh, autoregressive moving average with respect to orders. Okay. So, if order will really change then obviously the setup will really change accordingly. So, with this basic introductions, uh, means uh, with the time series setup, so we have to go little bit something more about the time series modeling. So, now uh, first of all what is the basic objective means I will first highlight what is the basic objective of time series modeling, what are the problems we will face and what are the special features we will receive. So, how we have to proceed or how we will get out with the uh, best models and that can be used for forecasting. Okay. So, for the time series modeling is concerns. So, there are three important issues identifications. Then second is estimations and third is, is testing and of course, another uh, model is called as a applications. So, that means there are four important objectives of this uh, time series setup. So, you have to identify the models because it is a lag issue is very important here. So, how many variables in the systems and how much lag length is uh, uh, means how much lag length you have to introduce in the system. So, number of variables, uh, uh, number of lags you have to introduce the system, these two uh, important of, uh, information you, uh, you have to be very careful. So, that is how identification is the most important tricks of the time series modeling. So, identification then estimation the moment you will identify the model then you have to go for estimate uh, estimation. So, that is to get the estimated values of the parameters and all these you know uh, N of statistics that is analysis of variance then uh, testing. So, uh, the uh, means as usual so uh, when you will go for any econometric modeling. So, you have estimated outputs then you have to go for testings with respect to reliability of the models because ultimately we need a model which should be best fitted and which should be considered as the uh, can be used for, for, for forecasting or policy use. So, that is why esti estimation uh, estimated results we need. Then finally, we have to go for testing. So, with respect to specification test, then um, goodness fit test, then also there is a term called as a DG test. I will highlight a DG test here yes, because we have not discussed details in the DG test uh, in the uh, uh, in our earlier lectures. So, here I will typically highlight because a DG test is very important in the case of time series setting and finally, we will come out with the applications. Okay. So, now uh, let me first briefly highlight the little bit structure about the time series setup. So, the brief brief uh, uh, a starting point of time series is like this y t equal to alpha plus summation uh, I will call it alpha 0 plus uh, uh, alpha i y t minus i i equal to 1 to n plus b t b t. Okay. So, this is or u t this is a simple time series modeling. So, uh, means basically time series modeling is in a univariate setup and it is a multivariate setup. Okay. 
univariate setups, then uh, it is a multivariate setup. So, this is univariate statistics, univariate in, in, sorry, univariate univariate uh, time series modeling. Okay. So, it is called as a univariate time series modeling UVTCM. Okay, univariate time series modeling, multivariate, uh, multivariate not S, multivariate time series modeling MBTSM, uh, UVTSM, okay, time series modeling with respect to univariate and with respect to multivariate. All right. So, now the moment you will uh, 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 the moment you will have this type of model. So, let me put it in other way. So, because uh, uh, it is not only the lag length is important, again lag length with respect to its error term is also important. So, that means, if in a broader sense the model will be alpha 0 plus summation alpha i uh, y t minus i plus uh, summation gamma j y t minus uh, sorry u t minus j u t minus u t minus j uh, j equal to 1 to n plus say b t. Okay. So, this is the complete models. Uh, complete models, uh, this particular setup is called as a ARMA setups, auto regressive moving average. This is called as a uh, auto regressive moving average models, auto regressive moving average models. So, now you see here, there are two problems here. First problem, there are two problems. First problem is a number of lag length, okay. then second problem, second problem the fitness of the models fitness of the fitness of the models okay so we need to highlight two things separately so what is a you know a number of lag length we have to choose in this particular schemes and oh, 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 fitness of the model means reliability of the models so of course we uh, in between uh, number of lag length and fitness of the models in between there is a, a specification test specification test and goodness fit test okay goodness fit test goodness fit test okay so specification test goodness fit test must be there so, in addition to that we will apply dg test okay so now here is time series modeling basically it looks for uh, uh, good identifications means uh, model must be perfectly okay with respect to number of variables with respect to its lag and with respect to its structures this is how the identification is all about then we have to go for estimation to get the estimated values of the parameters and all and its related statistics like RSS, ESS and also some of the statistics like you know AIC, SIC etcetera we will highlight all these things. Then you have to go for testing with respect to all these estimated results we have to go for proper testing to get whether the parameters are ok, whether the overall fitness of the model ok. Then finally, you have to use application uh, means it, you, whether you, it is used for forecasting or it can be used for policy making. So, that is how we have to be very careful. So, now, so two things are important number of lag length and fitness of the model. So, so uh, wh what is the important issue here in the case of time series modeling? So, two aspect is very important one is called as a lag length choice, lag length issue, and another is called as a uh, fitness, uh, fitness, fitness of the model. Okay, so for lag length choice, so we have discussed earlier AIC statistic, SIC statistics, final prediction errors. Okay, in the fitness of the models, so we use generally, in fact, three different structures. One is called as a uh, uh, specification test. Uh, specification test, specification test, then uh, goodness fit test, okay, goodness of fit test, then this is DG test, okay. So, specification test with respect to parameters, this is overall fitness of the model, and this is other way also can be designed through DG test. So, AIC we have already discussed very, very briefly AIC is nothing but RSS RSS into e to the power 2 k by n then this is ASS, ASS, SIAC squash information criteria is RSS k to n to the power k by n and finally, final prediction error RSS by n this is in fact yes, sorry RSS by n RSS by n e to the power 2 k by n RSS 
by n n to the n n to the power k by n r s s by n into n plus k by n minus k. Okay. So, this is how we have already discussed. This is how this choice of log length has to be decided. Okay. Minimum the error then uh, error uh, this log length has to be considered. In the case of digit test, so we have number of test like you know MART, okay, M MSE, mean square, uh, uh, root mean square error, okay, then you can say uh, mean absolute deviation percentage error, mean absolute deviation percentage error, okay. So that means mean absolute deviations mean square errors, uh, root mean square errors, mean absolute percentage errors. Okay. So, uh, let me highlight what is all these things. So, that means, digit test is very important here. So, in the case of digit test, so we like to have MART, first is MART mean absolute deviations. So, this is nothing but summation y t minus y t bars. Okay. Uh, in fact, modulus has to be considered okay. 1 by n t equal to 1 to n. So, okay. so this is min minimum absolute deviations then mean square errors, mean square errors, mean square error is nothing but summation y t minus y t bar whole square um, and, uh, 1 by n. So, mean square error, then root mean square errors, uh, root mean square errors, so summation y t minus y t bar whole square 1 by n, then it is 0 0.5 square root, then mean absolute percentage errors mean absolute percentage error 1 by n summation y t minus y t minus uh, y t heads divided by y t. Okay. So, this is t equal to 1 to n. Okay. This is how the uh, the digit test has to be tested. So, that means, it is all together every times there is a residuals. Okay. So, y t minus uh, uh, y t bar means it is a ex, uh, error term only. So, uh, if you will take this uh, squares means some square etcetera then we will get residuals value only. So, that means, residual is most important factor which can uh, which can be discussed in the case of time series modeling. So, it is not only variable is important in fact, cross sectional setting uh, error component is very important, but in this case it is more important uh, uh, like you know uh, direct independent variables. Okay. So, here uh, even if in one independent variable you are creating several independent variables and in the same times error terms will be a, a you know uh, error term has to be introduced and that has to be tested very uh, typically so that the model can be considered as the best fitted model so now here one uh, once we go for you know various aspects of time series modeling then obviously there are two specific problems we will uh, you will generally face one specific problem is a obviously by default there will be serious multicollinearity issue and there is a serious you can say autocorrelation issue. So, that is why you must be very careful before you handling the time series modeling. So, now uh, before I move to you know and there is a concept of volatility modeling. So, let me highlight the concept of uh, arch and uh, gauge models then in, uh, uh, arima models will specifically highlight in a better way then we will move to this volatility modeling like you know arch gauge uh, uh, etcetera. Okay. So, let me let me first highlight the structure of the particular structure here is so what we have discussed till now I will just summarize then we will come down to this particular. Okay. So, this is in invariant time series modeling. So, the two y t as a function of y t y t minus 1 y t minus 2 y t minus n. So, here the specific objective is to estimate the parameters like a beta 0 beta 1 uh, sorry a, a b 0 b 1 b 2 up to b n then a, of course, we need to have error terms e t. So, the moment you will get the error terms uh, e t then obviously, you will go for you know moving our schemes again. So, till now this is you know only auto regressive scheme. Okay. Uh, then obviously, this is univariate setup. So, which, which we have already discussed. Uh, okay first behavior of that variables obviously, it is no doubt about it. Uh, one variable y t then multivariate multivariate models with respect to 2 and more variables let us say y t and x t. Uh, multivariate TSM generally fall into one of the two categories first type is a distributive log model second is a vector auto regression model which, which we have already highlighted uh, in details. Okay. 
Now, uh, in the case of distributive log models, I have already mentioned. So, it is the endogenous variable as a function of uh, exogenous variables, uh, and uh, <laughs> and it's a <coughs> and it's a, a, a log. So, obviously, y t as a function of a beta zero x t beta one x t minus one beta t x t minus to, to like this beta 2 x 2 minus 2 then beta n x t minus n. So, objective to understand how changes in x t at one point of time influence y t in current and its future periods that is very important fact uh, we have to observe in the case of distributive log models. Then this is you know uh, like similarly uh, you know like uh, distributive log models there is autoregressive log models where endogenous variable y t as a function of exogenous variables x t and its log x t minus 1 x t minus n and it is a uh, lag of endogenous variable like y t minus 1, y t minus 2, y t minus 3 up to y t minus n. So, we will come down to that particular model again mm, here. Okay, there is a bar scheme here. Bar basically uh, you know z, z t equal to y t minus x t. So, that means the bar model will be written like this way uh, uh, in the framework of y t and x t. Okay, so, that means in the bar setup you must have two variables okay, y t and x t. Okay, so, this is generally written in various uh, different ways. Let me highlight how we, I will start a bar model. So, let us start with x t plus 1s, okay, then y t plus 1s, okay, then uh, uh, which is in the matrix format which is equal to let us say a 1 1, a 1 2, a 2 1, a 2 2 okay, into x t y t. Okay plus uh, some is, uh, uh, epsilon t uh, x t plus 1 okay then epsilon uh, y t plus 1s okay so let's say it is a time period uh, uh, t plus 1 is a current time periods so now it is a past uh, past values so uh, if i will put y t then obviously past value is y t minus 1 if i will put current t plus 1 then its past value obviously uh, t so, uh, if I will put it in explicit format, then the equation can be written like this way x t plus 1 is equal to a 1 1 x t plus plus a 1 2 y t plus a epsilon x t plus 1 okay. and then y t plus 1 is equal to a 2 1 x t then a 2 2 y t plus epsilon x a y t plus 1. So, okay, this is how two different models can be represented. This particular structure is called as a bar model. So, the vector is assumed to be a vector of its own log values plus a vector random disturbance that is what the bar scheme all about. Okay. Uh, advantage of bar uh, you know uh, specifically uh, allows examination of hypothesis about lead log relationship between two or more variables from a exploratory data analysis EDA. Okay. Uh, disadvantage is that can become little more than glorified data mining, data analysis in search or some objective matter theoretical framework. Okay, so, it is very much you know authentic means the proper structure is how you will go for the sampling etcetera. So, your sample size should be absolutely very high. Okay. And this is the uh, different structure of distributive log modeling. So, why there is a distributive log model? There are three different uh, uh, specific regions te technical aspect, institutional aspect, and psychological aspect. So, I am not going in detail all these aspects because generally I have already mentioned in the time series uh, setup. So, we must be very careful. So, uh, uh, the introduction of log because here one of the standard assumption is that. Uh, and the uh, current uh, value of a current uh, uh, variables uh, depends upon its the past trend. Okay, so if the past, uh, so it means it is well connected with its past trend. So the uh, the thing is theme is that or uh, the issue is that. Uh, so how many how many past observation it depends. So that is you know how many past uh, uh, periods time periods we need to incorporate in that particular time periods uh, means current time period that is very important. That means, if you take x t g uh, uh, x t j variables then uh, how quickly it has integrated with its past values like you know whether it is x t minus 1 or x t minus 2 or x, you know, x t minus k. Sometimes there are certain models. So, it start with uh, integrating feature values like uh, x t x t plus 1 x t plus 2 x plus 2 uh, up to x t plus k. So, that means, it is x t is current, then it is a past integrations and it is in you know, a future integration. 
then you have to having the collective information then you will go for further future forecasting. So, that, that is very important in the issue of time series modeling. Okay. So, as I have already mentioned there are three different structures you will find in the distributive loss schemes. One is called as a finite distributive loss schemes, then polynomial, polynomial distributive loss schemes, then infinite distributive loss schemes. So, uh, okay, so these are all we discussed because the moment you will go for distributive log models, then obviously you must have two different variables together because uh, altogether it is a multivariate time series modeling scheme. In the multivariate time uh, multivariate time series modeling scheme, at least you start with it two variables. Okay, otherwise it cannot be possible. So, uh, uh, then, uh, if not two variables, then obviously you will come down to this univariate time series setup. Okay. So, now in this in this particular setup, if there are two variables, uh, then it is a time series, multivariate time series modeling that two distributive schemes. So, under distributive schemes, so we have dif different uh, uh, game, um, different models all together so again. So, one one of such model is equal to fi is a finite distributive loss scheme. So, that means, uh, once you have a variable so y t as a function of x t, x t minus 1, x t minus 2 up to x t minus k. So, this is called as a finite loss scheme. So, that means, uh, and we know sometimes and you may not know then that is called as infinite log scheme. So, that k may be a k may be finite k may be means k less than infinite k may be a, a equal to infinite. So, equal to infinite means you are not uh, sure about how much log length it will be considered. Let us say I have 10,000 uh, sample points. So, we will get get n number of you know number of uh, log variables in the systems, but provided it should be optimum every time. So, your model improvement will be going on when you will add one after another variable in the systems. It is just like you know as I have mentioned it just like a stepwise regressions you have to uh, enter one after another log variable in the systems. Then every time so you have to check the overall fitness of the models that means, the parameters which is already there. So, that should not be affected and overall fitness of the model that should not be affected, but the moment you will add another variables then keeping all these variables uh, specifications or uh, and entry variable new entry variable should be significant and in the same times the overall spe specification on model fitness should be same conditions or you can say it should uh, it should be improved in fact uh, if it is same it's all right if it is declined then you have to stop there okay so that is how you have to go for uh, uh, you have to go for introducing lag in that particular system okay this is finite lag schemes uh, okay, the model of the finite loss scheme is like this way that means, it is a limit, limit is already there the, as I have already mentioned. So, there are two major problems we will face here in this a, a, a log models. Uh, one is called as a multicollinearity problems, another is autocorrelation problem. So, mostly that means, in when you will go for time series modeling and it is a introduction of log, then these two problems are obvious, okay, multicollinearity problem and autocorrelation problem is very obvious. So, obviously, you have to it is mandatory to check the multicollinearity issue and it is mandatory to check the autocorrelation issue. So, if the autocorrelation is a serious problem then you have to modify because there are uh, a, in fact, I have already mentioned uh, uh, you know uh, this particular structures uh, which we have uh, started with the initial beginning setups the detections. Okay. Detection, detection means you have to detect whether the model. Uh, is in accurate form. That means, the variables which you are in uh, use in that process uh, may not be appropriate uh, appropriate and for that you need to have a transformation appropriate transformation. So, the appropriate set setup appropriate mathematical form. So, that you will get the model in a better fitted. Okay. So, this is uh, you know uh, more specification about finite log distributive model. Then in fact, come down to poly polynomial distributive log models. In fact, polynomial means is the Nonlinear formats, uh, then but but nonlinear not with respect to uh, coefficients, but with respect to variables only, which we, we we have already discussed in the case of cross-sectional modeling. So variable you can uh, you can uh, you can say particularly we have discussed this issue in the case of uh, 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 this is particular qualitative response regression uh, regression modeling that to you know pro probability models. Okay, so. So, uh, that means, logit and probit model case we have discussed all these details. Uh, so, the thing is that here, so uh, polynomial distributive lag. So, here parameters are specifically constant, but in the variables. So, we are putting in a uh, in a different shapes like you know beta 1 x t, beta 2 x t squares, beta 3 x t minus 1, beta 
for x t minus 1 square like this way. So, this is in is different schemes altogether. So, you have to be very careful about this one. Then infinite log distributive log models. So, here is uh, here the limit is not uh, you know uh, 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 fixed here. So, that means we do not know what is n here. So, n may be a uh, means we are considering that it is a infinite in nature, okay, but it is very difficult to handle this type of problem. Okay, so, this is short run effect and long run effect. So, uh, so basically you see, so when there is a time series issue, then obviously there are two specific objective, what is the short run impact and what is the long run impact. Okay, so, it a, a, a the structure is completely different with respect to short run impact and with respect to long run impact. The model long run behavior, the model is the modeling structure is completely different in this short run the modeling structure is completely different. Sometimes, you know there is a, a model called as a vector error correction model which it integrates a short run impact along with long run impact. So, we will discuss in details uh, later. Okay. Uh, this is how you know short run, uh, uh, short run impact, long run impact here. So we specifically in this particular structures, we can study with respect to the parameter uh, value. So, the impact propensity that is short run impact oh, which is called as a beta 0, then long run propensity to oh, you know some of the uh, some of the uh, coefficients will be called as a long run impact of this particular systems. Okay, equilibria that is uh, okay, this is another auto regressive distributive log schemes. Okay, now you come down to volatility. So, this is this is serious uh, structures which we want to discuss now. Okay, uh, you know uh, volatility is the volatility is one of the interesting problems which usually we observe in various issues. So, for the time series modeling is concerned, volatility is the most. Okay, like this. Okay, so what is time series modeling altogether? So I have a time frame one uh, one side and another side the behavior of the variables. So the behavior variables will be like this. So let's say I will just plot uh, some of the variables like this. Okay, with respect to time. Let's say I will take a GDP structure. GDP. So t t equal to one, t equal to two, t equal to three. Okay, so up to t equal to say 20. Okay, so 20 periods I have taken. So, okay, so but 20 t, 20 period is not a reliable sample for time series modeling. You may at least you have say say 200 is you, okay. Uh, anyway, so for you know classroom just to, for clarification, I am taking 20 20 so that uh, uh, there may be lots of simplicity here. Yes. So uh, what I'll do? So I like to know uh, the volatility. So what is all about the volatility that I have to highlight here in this particular. Uh, setup. So, what I will do? So, I will just plot the variables. Okay, let us the plot variables like comes like this way. Okay, okay. This is uh, this is a different sub uh, structure of variables you will find in this setup. Okay, so this is how one of the structure find a, a, you, you will find the trend like this way. I will put another structure here g equal to d to 10 t. 1, 2, 3 up to like this a continuous, then I will get a structure like this. This is another type of structures. Let us I will take another schemes. Okay. So, this is another schemes here GDP this sides and GDP this sides. So, I will just go through like this. Okay. This is this is how this scheme will be all together. Okay. So, Oh, in this uh, out of all these three models, you see I am just giving a little bit flexible uh, you know in a decreasing trend. So, this particular model, so if you look make a look here, then it is very volatile in nature. Mm -hmm. This is less volatile, this is you know very very minimum volatility. Okay. So, in fact the thing is that what is volatile, first thing is what is volatility why it is important and for whom it is important. Okay. The, these three questions is uh, means these three questions are very much important before you going to analyze the volatility modeling. So, first of all uh, you know take a case of investment decisions. So, when you will go for any investment particularly this volatility modeling is a uh, most of the cases we handle in the case of time uh, financial time series. Okay, financial modeling, etc. So, when we will go for investment decisions, then obviously there are two items you have to observe. So, first is how much return you will have in this investment, 
and how much risk you have to bear in the investment. Okay. So, that means, one side the returns and one side risk. So, uh, the there is always game between risk and returns. So, the structure is that higher the risk and higher the returns and uh, lower the risk, lower the returns, but optimal uh, 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 a person who uh, means a investor who want always uh, um, who want always you know with a high return with a minimum risk. Okay? Uh, so, high uh, return with minimum risk, it is very, very difficult to uh, get uh, sometimes. Okay? So, what you have to do? You will go for uh, maximum return with the optimum risk. Okay? So, that is the structure you have to set. So, there are different models altogether and one of the way we will observe this is nothing but this uh, volatility modeling. So, we have to see how much volatility is there. See, if there is less volatility, then obviously, it is, risk is very less and obviously, in the same time, so we have to check how much return is in the uh, uh, in this particular investment. And if the volatility is very high, then obviously, it is very risky. That means, it may give you uh, high returns or it may not give you high returns. So, there is a you know uh, total it is uncertainty issue. Okay, so, that means, uh, there are two different model we will find. One is called as it is certainty, model with certainty and model with uncertainty. Okay, model with certainty means, it is a stable model, stability situation and uncertainty means it is a uh, it is not instability in fact it is not a stable it is very in the instability case it is very difficult to predict something or it is very difficult to forecast something but in the case of stable you uh, stability you can for, forecast something very uh, accurately so it is not a problem but you know in the case of volatility the uh, it is more interesting so the system should not be too stable and it should not be too instable so it should be in a in between these two. So, these are the two extreme if it is too stable. So, for instance, I will I, 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 I put like this way, I will put like this way only. So, that means, there is no such change at all, there is no such change at all. Then in that case, it is very difficult to go for investment. Okay. If there is no such volatility, nobody will take a risk. Okay. So, if you do not take risk, risk then obviously, return cannot be obtained easily. So, okay. So, what you have to do? So, uh, we need a very serious issue. For instance, this this is not a problem, but it is more interesting. This is somewhat a problem, but it is also interesting. But I will give you another type of uh, variations you may face. This is 0 t and this is g. Okay? So, let us check this, this type of structure. Okay? It is very volatile in nature. In that case, it is very difficult to handle or predict in this uh, particular angles. So, in that case either you can handle with volatility modeling or what you have to do, you have to go for a different transformation technique. If you will go for a different transformation technique, then it will give you uh, beautiful results and uh, you know forecasting issue. So, let me highlight what is exactly this volatility. Okay. Volatility basically means a uh, volatility volatility basically is a uncertainty okay uncertainty so uh, you know uh, uncertainty there are two forms okay so mean of the random variance mean of the random variance and variance of the variance of the random random variables okay mean of the ran, mean of the variables and variance of the random variables okay mean of the uh, random uh, random variables this is variable in fact uh, mean of the random variable and variance of the random variables okay so we have to see what is the mean and what is the variance okay there is a concept called as a tessonality issue okay so we will discuss the tessonality issue in the later stage uh, uh, tessonality means it will give you the stability issue and uh, uh, once uh, means uh, when we will go for modeling, then one of the interesting uh, requirement is that variable should be tessonary in nature. So, what is mean by tessonary? A, a variable will, will be called as a tessonary if its mean and variance are almost all uh, constant over the time frame. If it is if it is you know not constant, then there is a question of volatility, and that in that variables cannot be used for you can say or it can be it cannot be directly used for any uh, forecasting and policies. You have to first bring it to tessonarity uh, to what level it is tessonary, then that level has to be used for you can say 
preparing a good models and that to be a, that can be considered as the best model and can be used for forecasting and policy use. Okay. Anyway, so far as the time series modeling is concerned, so far as time series modeling is concerned, there is two issues. One is called as a homoscedacity and another is called as a heteroscedacity. So, which we have discussed. So, there is a chapter we have already discussed in the heteroscedacity issue. So, heteroscedacity means uh, uh, the error variance uh, error variance may not be constant over the means obviously error variance if error variance is constant then it is a homoscedacity issue if error variance is not constant then it is called as a heteroscedacity issue so i have already mentioned why there is a, a heteroscedacity always in the problem like you know there is a concept of error learnings then you know outliers problems okay um, different mathematical form of the models or you can say wrong wrong variable enter to the models or you can relevant variables not a incorporate in the model. So, these are the things why there is a system uh, it will not give you homogeneous rather than heterogeneous. Okay. Uh, so, if it is you know uh, uh, you getting heterogeneous issue then obviously, it is very problem. So, in the case of homoscedacity it is constant variance, it is constant variance over the time or over the samples then you know it will give you stable uncertainty. Okay. It will give you stable, stable uncertainty, but heteroscedacity it will give you unstable uncertainty. Okay, unstable uncertainty. In fact, a certainty term is insert. In fact, it is a Dixie term. Uh, sometimes you know, uh, I I am using the term stable uncertainty and unstable uncertainty. For instance, like this. So uh, as I have already mentioned, as I have mentioned already. So this is two uh, two extreme, uh, two extreme, and another is another is a uh, too much you know uh, too much rigid okay so this is this is another setup okay so now what is unstable uh, uncertainty means uh, uh, this is not stable uncertainty there is no question of uncertainty here so let me i'll put like this way uh, you know unstable uncertainty and stable uncertainty stable uncertainty means uh, i'll put like this okay this this way that means the uncertainty can be under a certain range only. The uncertainty can be under certain range. So, that is how it is called as a stable uncertainty. Okay. But unsta unstable uncertainty means there is no such uh, uh, no such uh, structure like this, it will become like this way. So, you are not very sure, oh, it is huge ups and huge downs. Okay. So, in that case it is very difficult to predict altogether, so, but uh, if this is the stable uncertainty then it is very easy to handle this problem. Okay. So, now there are two different uh, uh, two different uh, you can say problems you have to handle through uh, you know volatility modeling. So, volatility modeling basically volatility modeling volatility modeling basically deals with the two aspects homoscedacity aspect homoscedacity and this is not our job right now. So, there is another is called as a heteroscedacity. Okay. So, that means variance are unequal, here variance are equal. Okay. Variance are equals means variance are equal, if variance are equal then obviously your game is over. So, that means uh, it is already in the positive shape, so nothing to do extra. Okay. So, just you have to continue, but if you know variance are unequal then it will give you additional problem. So, uh, you have to solve again that additional problem before you use that model for forecasting. So, now once variance are equal then we we have different models. Okay. There are two there are various forms of the models are there with respect to heteroscedacity issue. Heteroscedacity which means error variance are equal, unequal over the different time frame because of various regions as I have already pointed out. Uh, outliers and uh, you know inclusion of uh, uh, unnecessary variables, uh, uh, exclusion of uh, uh, necessary variables, different mathematical form of the model, imperfection of error term, etcetera. So uh, so many ways it may be uh, there. So, okay. So uh, basically, error variance are not equal over the time frame. So you have two different models. One is called as a arch model, another is called as a gauge models. Okay. Uh, this is called as a auto regressive conditional heteroscedacity auto regressive auto regressive 
conditional heteroscedasticity and this is called as a generalized generalized autoregressive conditional heteroscedasticity okay so i i i will come down to here's right now so now volatility is a time series time series often regarded as a form of uncertainty okay that i have already mentioned so generally a, a risk a taking people will be a, a very means they need all these issues uh, before you know explaining their status or investment plan so they need a volatility issue more in, more specifically okay so these are the basic features of volatility okay i am just speak, skipping all these things then i will come down to particular uh, idea behind this volatility okay this is the general specifications so for the heteroscedasticity problem is concerned so we usually handle two different models one is called as the arch model and catch models so what is arch models so you see here so uh, volatility modeling volat vo vo volatility modeling basically deals with it two aspects arch models and catch models okay arch models arch of order p okay arch of order p i will call it here sigma square t is equal to alpha 0 plus uh, alpha 1 uh, 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 epsilon square t minus 1 okay alpha 2 epsilon square t minus 2 okay it will continue alpha p epsilon square t minus p okay so this is uh, this is general form of the uh, you know uh, 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 auto regressive conditional heteroscedasticity and in that case gauge model sigma square t is equal to alpha 0 plus summation alpha i epsilon square t minus i t minus i i equal to 1 to n plus okay beta j okay sigma square t minus j j equal to 1 to n okay this is two different uh, models all together so what is the uh, procedural measures here how you have to go for that once uh, what you have to do you start with the two variables first uh, let us say yt as a function of yt minus 1 yt minus 2 like this way so then you get the estimated coefficient so with the help of estimated coefficient you have the estimated model and y minus uh, y head that is estimated model will get the error term so now the moment you will get like this okay so you will you will find like this yt then yt heads okay so then et okay then uh, uh, this is epsilon t uh, it's better you put e, e square t minus 1 e square t minus 2 e square t minus p okay so this is better uh, error terms okay so it is there so the way we are creating yt yt minus 1 so yt minus 2 oh, yt minus 3 like this way then we will create et then et minus 1 et minus 2 like this way you know how the setup will be coming generally the setup will be like this this you know y t y t is like this then you know y t minus 1 like this way so this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 then y t minus 1 will start from here so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 okay then uh, y t minus 2 so this scheme will be like this then it will start here so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 okay then 9 10 okay so obviously there will be 10 years then y t minus 3 y, y, y t minus 3 so 1 2 3 then it will start 1 2 3 4 5 it will be again 10 years so this is how the sequence will go so that means you see here so oh, one of the condition of the uh, modeling is that your uh, sample of generation for all the variables should be uniform okay so as a result uh, uh, so first uh, if you like to consider so you know up to yt 3, 3 minus 1 then you have to take this much of clusters okay you have to take this much of clusters so that means this is rejected and this is rejected so that means altogether uh, you are losing here three different samples okay the, we are losing three different samples uh, this is three means you will start with actually four the, you will start with actually four okay this is uh, this is this is not correct uh, so we are losing three samples means so the one two three this is the proper sequence so three three uh, three samples you are losing so now 
So, uh, uh, if you add further then you will lose another sample. So, as a result it will give you degrees of freedom problem. So, you must be very careful how you obtain delts and similarly if you go for error term again. So, E t. So, it will be first you calculate E t with respect to Y t it can be calculated then you will go to E t minus 1 so then you will go to E t minus 2. So, like Y t minus 1 Y t minus 2 Y t minus 1. So, similarly you will get to get E t E t minus 1 E t minus 2 etcetera. So, now what is the uh, what is the model uh, importance is that. So, uh, you have to find out the variance of error terms ok sigma square t which is function of its uh, error component ok uh, square of the error component if uh, means here the uh, here the objective is all these coefficients should be all the coefficients should be statistically uh, signi significant ok. So, that means they are different from 0 if they are not different from the 0 then that, that means there is no volatility issue. Okay. This is general generalized format of you know uh, volatility model that to H models ok more generalized and more practical way we have to establish sigma square t equal to alpha 0 alpha square is square uh, epsilon square t minus 1 so alpha 2 epsilon square t minus 2 uh, then alpha p is epsilon square t minus p ok. So, this is the generalized formula. So, what you will do? So, you have to find out the means here a epsilon square uh, t means it is a error term square at time period t similarly epsilon square t minus 1 means a, a the error term square at time period t minus 1. So, similarly sigma square t is the variance of uh, uh, error terms uh, that is epsilon t. So, we, ha we have to regress the variance with the square of the error terms then we have to observe the volatility issue. So, if the vari variables are totally significant then obviously there is arch effect if not then you know there is no such arch effect. So, accordingly you have to be very careful about that issue. So, that means ultimately uh, we like to establish whether there is a volatility in the modeling means in that particular problem or in that particular uh, for uh, uh, what we have discussed in the investment decision issue. So, we like to know what is the level of volatility in that particular uh, uh, problem or a particular investment plan. If there is a huge volatility then accordingly the investor will take a decision if it is low volatility he will take a uh, of course, a according to as per his need and choice. So, that is why observing volatility is very important and is very uh, you know typical issue in the time series modeling it will give you long term trend and long term setups how you have to build the enter setups ok. Uh, this is the testing of arch models. So, how you have to go for all these testings or anyway then it is uh, now it is come for uh, advanced version of Gatch model. Uh, sometimes you know uh, Gatch model is generalized more advanced versions or broader concept than the Arch model or regressive conditional letters classity models. So, in the case of Gatch models uh, uh, means here the objective is you have to go for Arch effect and Gatch effect. Sometimes what happens uh, Arch effect may be there, uh, Gatch effect may not be there, but uh, once arch effect there then you have to go for gauge effect ok. If arch effect is not there then no point to go for gauge effect. So, gauge effect is more generalized concept if there is a gauge effect and it is a more general way you have to explain the volatility issue. So, it, it is you know uh, a just like you know we have discussed uh, uh, ARMA models so, uh, where we will start with the auto regressive schemes then moving average scheme then you know auto regressive with moving average scheme. So, here also same things we have arch, arch model and gauge model in the case of arch model it is like you know moving average schemes then who, uh, in the case of gauge it is the combination of auto regressive schemes as well as moving average schemes that is why we can explain shares. So, uh, the general framework of gauge model is like this way. So, it is a sigma square t uh, error variance is depends upon the square of error terms at the time period t minus 1 and at the time uh, you know error variance with respect to time period t minus 1. So, that means we like to know the uh, first we start with the regressing y 2 with the y t minus 1 or x t minus 1 something something. So, we have to find out the error component then you have y t with respect to its lag and e t with respect to lag. Then we uh, like to know uh, we have to find out the error variance then we have to regress error var variance with the square of the error terms. This is one side of the game in another side of the game. So, what you have to do we have to find out the error variance with respect to square of the error terms and uh, the lag of error variance ok. So, that means uh, you have to see the 
uh, see the effect of the error terms and the effect of the error variance. So, if your objective is like that way, this particular structure is called as a gauge models. Okay. So, uh, generalize if you, uh, it is arch of uh, 1 is to 1. Okay. So, 1 1 is to 1 means we are taking the error uh, uh, square of error term with respect to log 1 and square of error variance with respect to 1. So, it can be extended up to p k p k terms like this way. So, general general trend of this structure is sigma square t alpha 0 plus alpha 1 uh, uh, e square e square t minus 1 okay, plus plus gamma 1 sigma square t minus 1. So, okay, this is this is gauge of this is gauge of 1 is to 1. So, okay. so similarly, if you look up for uh, gauge of PQ, gauge of uh, G A R, gauge of gauge of PQ, then obviously the model will be like this way. So, sigma square t equal to alpha 0 plus uh, summation uh, alpha i e square t minus i, i equal to 1 to n plus gamma uh, summation plus summation gamma i sigma square t minus i i equal to 1 to n. Okay. So, this is how the gauge effect can be fitted. Okay. So, now uh, here the objective is you to find out the constant term then arch effect that is alpha 1 uh, alpha 1 some uh, a, a error square t minus 1 and you know gauge term uh, lambda 1 and sigma square t minus 1. So, that is why alpha 1 and sigma 1 is more important. So, that should be uh, that is that uh, that should be tested. So, that is our hypothesis that uh, alpha 1 and lambda 1 should not be equal to 0. If it is equal to 0, then obviously it is very difficult to uh, 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 you know interpret the volatility issue. So, this is how means the typical issue I mean null hypothesis to test alpha 1 uh, equal to 0 against alpha 1 not equal to 0. Similarly, lambda 1 equal to 0 against lambda 1 uh, not equal to 0. Yes, of course, uh, uh, we have discussed uh, arch model and gauge model, um, but uh, there is a various difficult for uh, you know means there is a additional structure of the volatility modeling like E gauge, G gauge, I gauge, etcetera and uh, it is more complicated, uh, more systematic in, uh, in fact and because of time constraints it is not possible to highlight all these details because it is more advanced and purely it is a research oriented problems. So, that is why we are not uh, means time uh, will not permit to go enter uh, uh, deep into this particular problems. So, what is my main idea is to highlight the uh, detail about the volatility modeling. So, basically the starting point of patch model and uh, more generalized format is gauge models. Then you know with respect to gauge, there is there is lots of different clusters like E gauge, G gauge, I gauge, etc. So this is you know some partitions with different condition and constraints. But basic theme is the generalized auto regressive conditional heterosclerosity models and uh, auto regressive conditional heterosclerosity models. So our main concern is to see what is arch effect and gauge effect. Okay. So with respect to different problem and different scenario, different situation will go for a different shape of the gauge models. Okay. So, this is not in our uh, uh, means this is not our aim to discuss all these details. So, uh, here we are just highlighting what is the volatility issue of the uh, time series modeling. All right. So, with this uh, we will conclude this particular session. Uh, thank you very much. Have a nice day.